Not cool. Very cool. So, um, he's by far one of the most tough writers, but his show is very special because he actually introduced one of the first female protagonists of Common Rider. This is Electrowave Human Tackle. Tackle is awesome. She's one of the best characters in Rider. And unfortunately, she's a victim of the, hey, we need to kill somebody off to progress the plot kind of a thing. So it's sad, but I will say this. She does have a revival in a 2010 decade movie. Uh, it's, it's a really good way to bring her back, but she gets sent off again in a weirder way, which is like, can Tackle get a break, please? So the sad thing about Tackle passing was uh, that her actress, not too long after that series ended, she was hit by a car and passed away too. She's the first uh, writer actress, to, uh, first writer actor to pass away. So uh, the second one to pass away, uh, not too long after, was the guy who played Yuki Joji, a uh, writer man, passed away of lung cancer, and then the third writer to pass after him was uh, Common Rider Stronger. So the guy we're talking about right now, uh, same thing, lung cancer. Don't smoke it; it's not good for you. So anyways, after this uh, Stronger got an upgrade that turned him into a uh, super dynamo. So essentially he had his own power source inside him instead of having to rub his Tesla coils instead. So what he would do is he would get this new crazy form of silver stuff and yeah, he'd do crap like this. Get shot with a screwdriver, catch one mid-air and chuck it back at a guy's heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So Stronger's a really, really fun one. It just recently got finished subbing. It's really a lot of fun. And this was supposed to be like the end of Kamen Rider for a while. Um, it's the ratings weren't doing so great, nobody really cared about it. Sentai had just become a thing with this season coming out. So uh, Sentai became the bigger push from Toei, and Ryder kind of fell into obscurity for a couple of years. So um, in the meantime, though, they had a couple movies known as the Legend 7 movies. Now, these things are almost impossible to find. There's maybe one or two of them where you can find maybe three minute clips from found footage of old, old, old Ryder teams. But uh, there were three Legend 7 Ryder movies, and rumors going around that with the upcoming decade movie that we're going to be releasing one of them along the Blu-rays. So hopefully we'll be able to see a Legend 7 Rider movie. Uh, now when the Legend 7 Riders are all together, it's kind of a big deal. Um, back in 2012, there was a Kamen Rider crossover movie with Kamen Rider O's and Kamen Rider Forza, known as Kamen Rider Megamax. Has anybody seen that movie? Yeah. All right. The cheering is needed because it's quite possibly the best Rider crossover movie. Solely because the set Legendary Seven return and they remade all of their costumes, they put all the greatest Kamen Rider suit actors back in the suits to do stuff, and they all got to do all these great, crazy moves they did back in the day with modern effects. Unfortunately, uh, my video file is corrupted. I wish I could show you guys it, but if you guys are looking for the video for the Legendary Seven Riders returning, go check out Kamen Rider Mega Max with O's and Forza. It is awesome. It is great. Nothing is better than seeing these guys jumping and kicking in one singular shot instead of all those multiple jump kicks. Nothing's cooler than seeing a V3 doing his spinning kick yes. where he jumps up in the air, kicks the monster, goes back off the monster, does a flip again and comes back at the monster, all with wire work. It looks kind of slow and cheesy, but it's like, oh man, if I was like five back in the 70s and I'm seeing this when I'm like 50 something, oh my god. So it's really good. I recommend you all check it out. So this is Common Rider. Hey, you know, the thing that started back in 71 that's actually back on in 79, what, what happened? So, this is what's crazy about Kamen Rider. They did the first reboot for Kamen Rider, and what they wanted to do was just call it Kamen Rider. So what they did was they based him off of a, uh, I think it's a locust in this one as well, and he's the first rider to be able to fly. Uh, he has, they, the, essentially what they did was they redid the whole story with uh, Neo Shocker instead of it being Shocker. So this guy's super smart, he's really good on his bike, he does all that stuff too, so yeah, they take him, they turn into a cyborg, and he hates it. So, eventually he becomes Skyrider because the show was doing so bad that they had to bring in older riders to make him seem more appealing, make him seem stronger, and all this stuff. So they brought in the older riders, they kind of gave him a crazy upgrade. So that's his newer outfit, and he can take his uh, scarf, put it on his uh, feet, push down these two things on his belt, and launch himself up into the eye and up into the air. So uh, he did a thing known as a sailing jump where he would go up into the stratosphere, you know, just get close enough to orbit, and then let himself rocket back down and get you. Uh, his kick was known as a rider break, so he would straight up just destroy everything. Uh, good times. I've actually been watching Skyrider slowly but surely. I really enjoy it. It's very goofy. You can tell when there's a huge writing shift. It's very much old school writer, but um, it, it gets a lot more crap than I think it deserves. On its own, if you didn't really see any older writer stuff and you want to see an older one that isn't too old as far as effects go, I'd check out Skyrider. Skyrider's fun. Plus, when you get to see the older writers show up in the show, things get nuts. They start throwing each other at monsters and they use like action figures spinning in the air to simulate it. It's great. It's really good. Like the show that style effects are some of the cheesiest things you'll ever see, but they are some of the best cheese factor anything things you'll see. And this is the one thing I'll say about Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu in general. They usually go for the best actors they can possibly get. And these are guys that are like young, 
new to this kind of stuff, but they're impactful. So they leave something with you. And, and, and you see a lot of these shows over here in America with like Power Rangers. You might get one or two really great actors, like I'm, like Jason David Frank, unfortunately. Like as, even though he's like, oh, it's Tommy, all that stuff. The guy is very into it when he's on screen. You can tell like he's not he's not being Jason anymore. He is Tommy. So where you see some of these actors, like they're not being whoever they are anymore. They are writer. So when they can suspend that disbelief and help you really get into something that's very silly and not really realistic at all, I think it goes to show how great a show they create and how how well crafted it is as a story. So we're gonna move along right here is Kamen Rider Super One. He is the first American-made Kamen Rider. He wasn't made in America. I mean, his body was made in America, and then he was shipped back, and yeah. So he's, he's an astronaut as well. So people think that uh, Forze is the first astronaut the space uh, rider. It's actually Super One. And Super One also has um, uh, hand changes. So instead of having weapons, he would actually change his hands. Uh, he's based on a hornet. So if you look really closely, he has like these like weird stingers and these crazy eyes on his uh, helmet. He has these tassels that are supposed to simulate the wings. Uh, but he has these little switches on his sides of his belt. He can switch them out for different arms, like a rocket arm or a um, grappling arm or a magnet arm or an ice arm, all these crazy things. Now, this photo in particular, this is really neat. So um, there's a gentleman that lives in South, uh, South California, in uh, Southern California. His name is Barry Evans. He went to Japan around the same time they were airing Kamen Rider Super 1. Uh, the suit actor was very ill. He was on set one day. He could fit the suit. So this picture right here is actually my buddy Barry in the Kamen Rider Super 1 suit that was actually aired in Japan. So he got to be Super 1 for a week, which is cool. And uh, a couple of years later he went back and he met the actor and the actor paid for him to get a new suit. So if you guys ever go to Southern California and you see uh, Super 1 running around, that is an official Super 1 suit worn by a guy that was officially Super 1 for a week. That's pretty rad. Now, you know, Barry is also a really cool dude because Barry does a whole bunch of suit acting stuff. Uh, he's been Kikaider in Hawaii. He's also been D3 in Hawaii. And he's done a bunch of other stuff. Uh, he is probably one of the coolest dudes you'll meet through. When, when I say old heads, I mean it with a lot of respect. Like, old head Kamen Rider guys, they love that crap. But they don't really care too much about the newer stuff. Barry is one of those dudes where if you talk to him about Rider, he's so knowledgeable. Very cool dude. Alright, so we're going to play a game real quick. Who's that Rider? Now, I know some of y'all have been in here before and have played this game before, so if you have played this before, please keep your hand down. Let's not play the game. Now, I want you all to look at this character very closely. Look at that guy at the top of that smokestack. This is an actual suit actor in a suit that had to climb up over 100 feet onto a smokestack to do a two-second pose. Terrifying. He had to wear a mask, can't see anything. Now, my question is, which rider is it? Your hint is, it is a rider that you've seen before. It is from The Legend 7. If you think you know, put your hand up. What's up, sir? Who do you think it is? Stronger. No, it is not stronger. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Right up front. I'm going to say Ninjago, the second one. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Which one? Nigo? Right at two? Yes. No, not right at two. You're getting closer. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, sir. B3. It is B3. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently he slipped halfway down. He's okay. He landed on the bush. He's good. But yeah, that, that's pretty terrifying. So uh, I got a, I got a prize for you. Oh wait, here it is, right here. I'll be like uh, I hope you like super deformed riders. So uh, we're gonna keep moving along real quick. This one is another one. Now I don't have a prize for this one, but I may give you a discount code to my props and costume page where I actually make Tokusatsu props and costumes. So maybe fifty percent sound good to anybody? Whoa. Yeah, fifty percent half off of an item. Anybody? So this is another Kamen Rider actor. Now, I'm not going to tell you uh, the name of the character. I want you guys to figure out which Rider actor this is. I will say this. This is a trolley that is 250 feet up in the air. And he has no net and nothing clipped onto him. He's just dangling. Who do you guys think this is? He's one of the Legend 7. Anybody got an idea? Sorry, I've played this game before. I can't let you answer before. What do you think, man? It is not Hongo, but you're close. The hair is very similar. Anybody else? Come on, that's the, what's up, man? Rider Man? Not Rider Man, nope, nope. Alright, one more shot. Yes, sir. That's stronger. That is stronger! Okay, so hey, after the panel, come over to me, I'll write down the code for you, okay? Cool. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna move along to where a rider gets a little bit weird. This is the 10th common rider, common rider Z Cross. Z Cross is awesome! He's a ninja! Ninja Rider! Like, everybody's wanted one, so we got one. This guy has a kunai with chain coming out of his wrist. 
This dude has bombs on his knees that he can detonate from miles away. This dude has shurikens he can launch like this that explode on contact. This dude is just nuts. Oh, and did I mention he has a better healing factor than Wolverine, so much so that he can rebuild the metal in his body just by kind of like absorbing some of the dirt in the ground and like iron and stuff like that. Really, really, really cool stuff. So he got a movie. And he had this really badass bike, and he did the crossover with all the other ten riders, and everyone's like, man, this movie this is great. This is going to be a great way to start off a series. No series. <laughs> Just one movie. Now, the movie's really awesome. It's, it's uh, all ten riders all together. You get a song called Dragon Road from Akira Kushida, which is one of the cooler tokusatsu guys that does uh, songs and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, there was no series. It's a really big bummer, but they did do uh, Z-Cross some justice. Um, so th this is Ryo Murasame. And he gets his series in a manga known as Kamen Rider Spirits. Kamen Rider Spirits, if you've ever seen panels of Kamen Rider stuff like this before, it's usually from Spirits. Spirits is one of the best manga I've ever seen. And the problem is, though, it's one of those manga that meanders, because the person that's writing it doesn't know where they're going with it. They're just throwing a fan fiction story of writers doing this and that, this and that, and going to like how Rider Man came back, and, and how Z-Cross came to be the writer that he is today, and, and how all these writers finally met with each other after the Legend 7 were mostly disbanded at the point. Um, if you get a chance to find any scans of it, go read Common Rider Spirits. It's awesome. Um, I went to Thailand a couple years ago and I was very fortunate to find every volume of Common Rider Spirits and Shin Common Rider Spirits in Thai, which is a lot easier to translate than it is uh, Japanese. So uh, slowly but surely, I should have the first volume up eventually. Alright, so you get really great artwork like stuff like this, and, and the artist for it is just one of the most talented writer artists out there. He's also uh, the guy that did the main designs for the Megazord for Power Rangers. Wow. Uh, yeah. He, the, the thing that's crazy about Toei is like they have a lot of people that are interconnected as far as the designs go. Um, it's they get him every once in a while, and when he does these big spreads like this, it's like it's always a great just portrait of all the writers. Beautiful stuff. So we're gonna move along to what's known as one of the more popular common writers, common writer Black. Common Rider Black is one of the first ones to have more modern effects. The first one to use wire stunts, the first one to use um, flashing lights and things like that. And this is the first one to have an interactive toy. Uh, most Common Rider uh, series sell belts and stuff like that. This one sold a belt that had a flashing light sensor. So when this dude was doing his transition,